Alright guys, this is a long plane review for Street Talk on the Amstrad CPC, released by Ocean Software in 1986. And this is a TV license of a short-lived show that only ran for one season and 13 episodes in early 1985. It was riding on the back of the success of Knight Rider and Airwolf shows. Now the former had a fancy car, the latter had a helicopter, so here we are with one based on a motorcycle. Uh, okay, so the opening of every episode had this premise narrated, which will give you a bit of a background. Okay, here we go. This is Jesse Mack, an ex-motorcycle cop injured in the line of duty. Now a police troubleshooter, he's been recruited for a top secret government mission to ride Street Hawk, an all-terrain attack motorcycle designed to fight urban crime, capable of incredible speeds up to 300 miles an hour and immense firepower. Only one man, federal agent Norman Tuttle, knows Jesse Mack's true identity. The man, the machine, Street Talk. There we go. <laughs> and let's start off the Amsterdam version here. Uh, this came out nearly two years after the series was cancelled. Um, released in late December 1986 for the Amstrad, but the TV series had had its last episode on the 16th of May 1985. And this had a troubled development history, which we'll talk about in a bit. Now here we are on the title screen, um, no loading screen picture, which is missing on the disc version we're playing here, but it is on the tape version, but we're not missing out much. Now the music on the title screen is nothing like the famous-ish Street Hawk theme song by Tangerine Dream, and guys, after this video, go and check out the opening theme and I uh, intro to Street Hawk, the TV show on YouTube. It is so achingly an awesome 80s. There's the music, the video, and oh my god. Go and watch, the tr uh, go and watch that after this video. I'll link in the description below. Why they haven't used the music for that uh, here, I do not know. Perhaps they didn't get the license for Tangerine Dreams music. But anyway, off we go. And we're on the Street Hawk. Uh, watch out for the scrolling messages at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, three villains are rushing back to their hideout in the country where they have a girl captive. There I'm using my turbo, more on that in a minute. You have to stop them. And then we get another message going, a wine store is being robbed by free punks. And now we've got a timer, uh, well, a distance meter at the bottom right corner ticking down to uh, the robbery. And we've got to basically pull up when the... Um, that reaches zero, just just above robbery, and will be any second, and then you'll see what happens. Oh, actually, the bad guys are in the black cars, and we can shoot them. Watch out for the men in the manholes shooting. Right, very near the robbery, break down, don't go past it, gotta go really slow, get to zero, and there we go. And we switch to a side-on shoot up section. We have to shoot the three robbers, and there we go. Carry on, and it says a kidnapper is ahead of you, get him. So now we've got to chase up, uh, a chase up to a kidnapper and shoot him. Now the Street Hawk has armor. When the armor reaches zero, um, the bike is immobilized and it's game over. You can see the armor meter there below the speedometer. Um, turbo shows how much turbo we have left, which is not much. That will get replenished after this. That's the that's the guy we will need to catch, and we should get a little message pop up in any second. Um, there's a laser overheating thing there, just below the turbo, and then there's air jet. That's how many times you can jump in the air. Oh, we've got the message here. Well done, Jesse. You stopped a kidnapper. Hey. Um. Okay, but you also got to watch out for the temperature of the bike. Says temp there. If you go above sixty miles per hour, um, the temperature starts warming up. So if you don't want that to happen, uh, stick at a maximum of sixty miles an hour. So there you go, I'm about 60, 70. Uh, try the judgment speed. Weave in and out the traffic. And then we get another message come through about a wine store being robbed. Um, by free punks. And that's pretty much it. Um, well, I think we do about two of these, two or three of these robberies. And then we get the final mission where we have to um, shoot the kidnapper's car. Oh, look, there, you can jump there. Well, actually, guys, the scrolling is actually really nice here. There's a good range of stuff. You've got the turbo, you've got the jump, um, got lasers, and that's all done really nicely, actually. This driving section is actually pretty good. Um, it's just there's not much more to the game. Once we um, get the um, kidnapper, the game just loops. 
It's one of the shortest hamster games I've played, actually, from a full price publisher like Ocean. Oh, and if you go too slow, the police uh, catch up with you. Um, so that's why you need to use the turbo to get away from the police. Um, and we've stopped another kidnapper. So we're now basically on to the final mission. Um, and we should actually change scenery into the countryside here. Okay, um, so this was developed by Choice Software. Uh, they were known for doing Spy Hunter, Platoon, Daily Thompson's to Kaplan, Beachhead, Mario Bros, Raid Over Moscow, New Zealand Story, etc. for the Amstrad. But the actual coder here has not been given any credit in the game or in the manual or anything. Um, with the, well, the specy version, according to um, World of Spectrum, was done by Paul Owens, the coder, and F. David Fort, the graphics artist. David did do graphics work on the Amstrad games like World Games and Loading Screens for Head Over Heels movie and Short Circuit. Um, so he may well be doing the graphics here because this looks like um, a specy port. Uh, we don't know if Paul was the coder here, Paul Owens. Um, he did pretty much only specy games. Someone may have converted his specy work here. Who I don't know. So actually, here, guys, we're looking for the Porsche, which which is actually in red. I thought we got another robbery to stop. Um, what else to mention here quickly then? Um, because we're going to get to the end of the game very quickly. So I've got to talk quick here. Um, other versions of the game. So we talked about the ZX Spectrum version. Um, there are actually, there's actually two different Street Hawk games for the Specky rather famously. From what I can understand, this game was advertising catalogues and orders were taken by customers for Street Hawk. But for whatever reason, there was delays in making the game. So a rushed out version from Nigel Alderton and Joffa Smith, uh, known as uh, Street Hawk Subscribers Edition, was made. Oh, there's the Porsche. That's the Porsche we need to shoot. That's the final bad guy. And we've done it. <laughs> That's basically the end of the game. And then it loops. Um, so Joffa Smith rushed out um, a, spe <laughs> a version of Street Hawk to fulfill catalog orders. And it was a weird jetpack type clone of a game. Uh, when it received bad reviews, a new game was programmed afterwards. And it's pretty much identical to the CPC version. Uh, as, we, as we can see here. Um, the Specky version has no music. And the sound effects are poorer in game. Um, the Specky version also tries to cram in the speed, damage, turbo, etc. levels into a squash dashboard at the bottom of the screen, like you would ha have as if you were riding the motorbike in from behind. It's a nice idea, but it's actually harder to read. Um, some cars and bikes shoot back at you in the Specky version, but not in the Amstrad version. Um, it's hard to decide which one's the better one, really. Uh, there's a few extra bits and bobs on one version compared to the other. Um, I think I maybe like the Amstrad version better, but the play is pretty much exactly the same. Commodore 64 version. Um, there was a port for the Commodore 64 in the works, but it was never finished. The, there's a website called thegamesatweren't.com. That's a very good write-up on this if you're interested. Uh, but basically it was outsourced, but Ocean weren't happy with the progress of the game, so brought it in-house. A new good game was in the works, but it was taking ages, and it was more like a Miami Vice type game where you could drive around the whole city. Um, and this was still in development into well into mid 1987. Uh, Ocean got angry, decided to cut their losses, and pull the plug on the game. Uh, not surprisingly, this series having its own plug uh, pulled nearly two years earlier. And there's a game over here in the Amstrad version. Um, actually, the same about the comparing to the Specky version, the Amstrad version seems to move faster at top speeds. Uh, but the shooting sections on the Specky is weirdly more colourful and has better animation on the sprites. And there's more bad guys to shoot. So, a few little minor differences. Uh, maybe I'd probably go with mm, the Amstrad version. Maybe. Um, okay, so this, re this was reviewed in Amstrad Action Magazine issue 15 in December 1986. Um, they liked the presentation and gameplay initially, but noted that it won't hook you for long, giving an overall score of 66%. And I kind of agree with that score. I think as a final review score from me, guys, um, I'm going to give this 6.5 out of 10. So there we go.
Not bad, not bad, but better than a lot of Ocean's other movie licenses of the era like Knight Rider, Highlander, etc. And here's the uh, loading screen that we don't get in the disc version, but we did the tape version. Just wanted to show you that. There you go, guys. Thanks for watching and see you again soon. Goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that, if you did please click a like below, leave a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already, and over that way there's another video for you to check out, Zypho out.